Hi everyone and welcome to our live stream. I'm gonna start off with some music like we always do, but my name is Luciano Minetti and very excited to be here with two really fun keyboards today. But before we say anything else, let's make some music Latin jazz style. All right, everyone, welcome to our live stream. Hopefully now you're all joining us. Uh, once again, my name is Luciano Minetti with Korg and here today to do a live stream on two very similar keyboards that have a lot in common uh, and can give you a lot of benefits. And we're gonna talk about how these two keyboards are similar and how they're different, all right? And my goal today, uh, if you're already a seasoned expert uh, at Arrangers, uh, this is gonna be geared towards someone who might not know as much about these uh, entry-level, really awesome keyboards that we offer. Um, the EK50 on the bottom uh, and the Korg i3, okay? So the goal for this live stream, we're gonna be going over the common ground between both. We're gonna talk about the physical differences. Obviously, you can see there are different sizes <laughs> of keyboards. Uh, we're gonna give you some playing examples as always, and we'll go through some of the styles, learn about what those are. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about some of the sequencer uh, features that you can get in the i3 uh, and the EK50, but I'm gonna take you through a little bit of how to record um, right here on the i3. So by the way, nice to have everyone here joining us. Uh, I see a comment, by the way, uh, EK50 is a great keyboard, where is that comment? It had a microphone, pretty good for the price if you ask me, and I totally agree, the EK50 is an amazing keyboard. So we're gonna talk about all the value that you get inside of this instrument. So, that was a Latin jazz style that's actually available on both uh, keyboards that I played, and it's called uh, Latin Big Band, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so let's start, before we keep playing, let's start from the outside, and let's understand what is different about these keyboards. Now, the most obvious difference, speakers versus no speakers. Now, at the heart of these keyboards, uh, they're both arrangers. Now, we call this an entertainer keyboard, the EK50, 
and the i3 says music workstation on it, but really um, the core way that you navigate it is going to be very similar to that of our Arranger line of keyboards. So if you're familiar with our PA series, our professional Arranger, uh, these are going to have a lot of similarities in the way that you interact with them in a live setting. Uh, like you saw me do here, going through some of the variations that build the groove as you play, uh, as well as choosing some of the different parts that I want to hear. Um, so I was able to bring in other instruments uh, and take them out kind of quickly on the fly. That's what an Arranger keyboard uh, does really, really, really well. Now, the EK50, starting with the speakers here, they are two 10 watt speakers. So if you're somebody who's looking to just get into this arranger space and try experimenting with styles, and as you can see, it's fun to just to jam, even if you just want to jam. But maybe you don't have an external speaker system and you have a little bit more room for a slightly larger keyboard, the speakers that are inside of the EK50 are going to be a great option for you. If you're someone who wants a little bit more hands-on control, we're going to talk about some of the differences in buttons on the i3. Um, this could be another alternative, uh, and again, going to give you that same arranger heart uh, and workflow. Now, size-wise, the i3 is absolutely so small and portable. It's only 3.1 inches thick, uh, and it's only 8.8 .8 pounds, so under 10 pounds is going to be as light as it's going to get. Uh, so if you're looking to bring it around with you on the gig, this could be a really great option uh, for that specifically. Uh, now the EK is also very light also. EK50 is only a, 60, a little over 16 pounds, uh, which keeps it very, very portable. Now, looking at the main panels here, I, I do have a close-up of the i3 panel that you're going to be seeing a lot today um, because uh, I'm going to be showing you that sequencer, uh, so I want you to be able to see the i3, but you can see that there's a little bit more hands-on control on the i3. Now, a lot of the styles are actually the same and a lot of the sounds are the same, uh, but you might have a little bit more customizability here. For example, you saw as I was playing through some of that Latin jazz style that I have all these different buttons here, these different parts of the accompaniment parts, right? So there are eight accompaniment parts that are making up those various rhythms. Now on the EK, I have those, that same structure and the same sounds that are going to be produced. I have the other parts kind of grouping a, a broader category, whereas on the I3, I have more buttons to be able to choose exactly which parts of the rhythm I want to take in and out. Another feature that you're going to see on the EK, uh, it has a really nice number pad, which will give you quick access to getting to certain styles, uh, certain sounds. And going back to the i3, one of my favorite features, and for those of you just joining us, again, welcome. We're talking about some of the similarities and differences between the i3 and EK50, but EQ knobs, which we're going to show you what that does uh, in just a second. But that's pretty awesome, uh, and it's going to make it really easy to just customize the sound. So. Let's play a little bit and let's talk about how arrangers work. So I was playing the style from the i3 to start, so I'll start here with the EK50 and I'll go to my next uh, sound that we'll demo here. Now a couple things to understand when you navigate these keyboards. You got style on the screen, you're going to see the name of the style, and you got keyboard set, okay? Now styles are going to be prefabricated rhythms and accompaniment uh, that will automatically generate based on whatever chord you play. So, as you saw me playing, hitting the play button, I have these style controls. This is my section to control what the styles actually do, um, which, is, which, is, which is pretty awesome. So we're going to go through how that works, but let's hear what we have. I have this pulled up. It's called House Garage, uh, number 65, and I have a sign lead for my keyboard set. All right, so that's a cool sound. And you can see here I have a pad in my left hand. Now, one thing I like about both of these keyboards, and if you're new to this, you know, it's gonna be very conducive for you to jump in and just really get started, but everything is really nicely laid out on the panel. So I can see that the split is turned on. I have a split button, so it's saying, okay, the left hand is different. And I have very, very clear light up buttons which tell me which parts I'm hearing. So as you can see, lower part and I have an upper one. So one thing that's pretty cool on the EK that I like is that you can just simply click any of the upper or lower parts to just turn them on and off. So now I hear it. If I turn it off, now you're not going to hear anything in the upper voices. I could turn on upper two. Give me a different sound. I could turn on upper three. And if I want to layer them, I can play them all together. So very easy and hands-on to be able to just kind of make it happen and, and turn layers on and off. Now, very easy as well to balance. So if I started out, maybe I wanted to get a vibe like that before I bring the groove in. I'm going to just take you through my flow if I'm going to try and make this happen. 
Um, but check it out. So maybe my left hand is a little bit um, you know, louder than my, my right hand in this case. So all I have to do to change that on the EK50, if I want to make the upper voice a little bit more, press upper and start turning my dial. And you can see it changes the screen upper level and I can adjust my volume level. And now I'm kind of better there. Cool, I see it. By the way, thank you all for joining today. I see we have some comments already. Yes, we will show the grand pianos. Can you please show the grand pianos? Very important sound, 100%. Um, you know what, I'll do this. Before I go forward, I'll show you the grand piano. It's a great time, by the way. Um, Urban, so thank you for your question. If you wanna play a grand piano on, on any of these keyboards, check it out. There's a grand piano button that will always take you, no matter where you are, to the grand piano, which I think is a great feature. So, I3, it's over here, grand piano button, and EK50, it's right here in red. And as soon as I plus that, and there it is, it pulls up a grand piano. So I'll give you a little demo. So you can hear really nice. And the same goes for the for the i3. So you're on a gig and you need to play piano, it's always kind of a good place to go back to. You can click the button, grand piano sound, and it lights up on red uh, on the i3. And Now, again, very easy, and you can see the i3 also, as well as the EK50. Look, octave plus and minus, octave plus or minus or transpose. So it's very hands-on, uh, which part of one of the things I really love about these instruments. Um, so back to the original. Thank you for your question again, Urban. Uh, so I'm going to go back to that sound we were working with, the sign lead in the top. All right, so next thing you want to know, we kind of discussed a little bit there about how to adjust the balance between voices. I have three upper voices and a lower voice. It's going to be the same on the i3, three uppers and a lower. Coming in here, if I want to change which sound is in a specific upper voice, it's very easy. So I can go here to, let's say, upper two. I can click shift and press upper two. And now you can see it's going to tell me what sound is in upper two. So I can go through and navigate. There are over 700 sounds in EK50 and 790 in the i3. Uh, so a lot of sounds to choose from. But as you can see here, this says cat lead. I can go using the category button to kind of skip through and find different parts uh, groups of sounds. So let's say we're looking for maybe another layered in, let's see. Sometimes I don't know what I'm looking for until I start scrolling. All right, let's see. Jazz flute, all right, a pad. You can't go wrong with a pad. So this one is called Air Clouds, and I think it's cool because it'll go nicely behind uh, the sign lead. But as you can see, if I just turn off upper one and I'm only hearing upper two, Cool. Add the sign lead. It's kind of got a slow attack on it there, so that'll give you a nice, if you're kind of playing a fast lead line, you won't hear it, and if you kind of hold it, you'll, you'll start to come up uh, from behind in the sound. So, very easy to change sounds, and we'll explore some more of the sounds a little later on. Let's go to the next part of the keyboard, and that is going to be the styles. Now again, styles are common to both of these instruments. You're going to have styles on the i3, and you're going to have styles on the EK50. Styles being automatic accompaniment that is generated for you depending on the chord that you play in your left hand or actually over the whole keyboard depending on how you have it set up. So in this case, I can see that the style is called House Garage. First thing you want to know is depending on which is lit up, if it's green, that means I'm on variation one. If I press variation one button and it goes red, I'm on variation two. Same goes for three and four. So very easy to get through when you're playing on the gig. You can kind of quickly uh, navigate through. Uh, let's see. By the way, someone asked a good question. Uh, Fahim, thank you for your question. Can you load styles into, uh, from your Korg PA arrangers? Uh, so you can actually load in PA50 styles into the i3 uh, or the EK50. So from the PA50, you can load it in, and I'll show you uh, in a second how to do that. Um, but you cannot load it in from a PA300. 
Um, if you're looking to create your own styles, you're going to want to look at the PA series. Even the PA 300, PA 600, 700, 1000, 4X, they will all let you create your own styles inside of the keyboard. Okay, but yes, you can load additional styles. And if you're looking to get additional styles for your EK50, uh, you can actually go to the EK50 page on Korg.com. Uh, maybe Eric from Product Support can put it in the comments, but you can actually see this bonus styles where you can download more styles for your EK50. Cool. So if I want to get playing, it's as simple as pressing the play button and let's see what happens. All right. So I deliberately started this with only the drums so you can hear how we can layer in different parts of this style. I'm on variation one. Watch what happens if I add percussion. Here we go. So the percussion had the, the claps. Here we go. bass and other parts. Let's see what we got. Now when I'm ready to evolve the groove, just like our Arranger keyboards, the, the PA series, Click the next variation. Here we go. Let's try variation three. And now I'm back to variation one. So you can see it's very easy to kind of just go through and as I click the variations, it will change what drum, what percussion, uh, what bass, is played and that's pre-programmed in the style. So when you go ahead and, and let's say download additional styles, um, you know, that, that's where you're gonna be able to get different uh, parts of that. But as you can see, there's so much variation within the variations because like I programmed uh, this preset in my set list to start with nothing, right? So that you just hear the drum. So, you know, maybe I build it up. Maybe I start with just a pad. And then I'm ready to add, you know, you can build it up without even using the style variation. So there's a lot of customizability in there uh, alone. So by the way, thank you all for joining. I'm just looking to some of the comments. Uh, so someone says that I have the same chip. So they do have the same sound engine. So in, in the heart of the keyboard, uh, these uh, have the same sound engine. So they're compatible uh, when it comes to if you want to load those PA50 styles. Um, they do uh, accept uh, that same format, which is really nice. All right, so somebody did also ask about electric pianos, and yes, I can play you an electric piano. Let's see if I have one pulled up here. Let's see, Lin Bank J. This is a cool electric. Let's see what we get here. That's a little electric piano there. We we're gonna get there later, but since you ask about electric piano, we might as well just play it. So, um, hello from Spain. Nice to have you all here. Uh, very cool. Uh, somebody says, how does it compare with Nautilus or Kronos? Totally different uh, animal, really. Totally different uh, way of navigation. Uh, you know, this is gonna be more similar to our Arranger. Both of these keyboards, even though this is considered entertainer, it has music workstation on it. The heart of the keyboard is an Arranger in both of them. That's why we wanna spend some time talking about it uh, so that it kind of clears it up about, you know, what family do these fit into. They have common roots as an Arranger. So it's gonna be a totally different type of navigation. There's some similarities to a product like uh, Nautilus and Kronos, great sounds. Uh, there's a sequencer in both of them where you can record, uh, but it's gonna be a different platform. So thank you for your question. All right, can we take it to church? <laughs> I'll try and take it to church in a little bit. All right, cool. So back to the EK50. We were exploring some of the different ways to kind of navigate and, and embellish styles and, and make it through. Um, so 
a couple of other things that are similar to arrangers if you're new to this. For example, let's pull up, I have Tarantella, Italian. If you're Italian from Italy there, it's pretty cool. Um, ensemble button is pretty cool. Another hands-on control that you're going to have on both of these instruments. You can see ensemble here and ensemble here. The ensemble button is going to automatically play full chords uh, depending on uh, if, you're, if I'm playing one note in the right hand, it will embellish it into a full chord, which is pretty handy. Um, so check it out. If I press ensemble. And if I, depending on what chord I play in my left hand. So you can see if I play major chord. I mean. That's the ensemble button. Pretty cool there. Um, another couple of buttons here on the EK and then we'll kind of bounce back and forth and I do want to uh, do some cool playing uh, demos for you and then we'll talk about uh, the sequencer and all the fun stuff. So style controls. If you're new to this, again, you saw me navigate through the variations. There's also a fill button, which is pretty handy. So we can use another example here, but I'm going to start the groove and then I'm going to show you what happens without playing too much so you can hear how easy it is to build a groove. All right, variation one. Let's hear variation two. Add a little bit of a guitar comp. Now, let's do a fill before we get to variation three. So I'm gonna press fill button and then I'm gonna trigger variation three. Here we go. You can hear how easy it is to kind of manipulate the fill and you can get the hang of it the first times I started playing arrangers. Um, you know, it was always a, it was a learning curve. I would trigger it too soon and then the fill would happen and then it's a little awkward. You know, you got to get the hang of it, but it's really easy. It's just about getting the timing uh, and, you know, organically making the music evolve. That's what takes some practice and I'm still learning too. Prior to coming to Korg, I always say this, I said it on the PA600 stream that we did. You know, I was not an arranger person because I, you know, I play jazz piano. I typically bring out a digital piano and I'm good for the gig. But once I started diving in, I started realizing that it's, it's a great jam tool. Even if you're not the person to go out and be the one man band or, you know, perform out as a jam tool, as a practice tool, it's really valuable. Uh, and it helps you just evolve music. If you're practicing your comping, if you're practicing your soloing, as you can see, I was playing a lot of stuff. That's where it becomes really fun and I think valuable. And especially at this price point where you're looking at under $500 for an EK50 uh, and around 600 for the i3, you know, that's, those are United States prices. Uh, but that's where you really get into the power and, and the fun. So that's the fill button. There's also um, a count in and breaks. So you can actually trigger that if you want to just be a stop and do a solo break, you can use that as well. So we'll try it. So pretty straightforward a break there and it can also serve as a count in for you as well uh, if maybe you're cueing in a vocalist or you're working with some other musicians and the arranger is going to be the heart uh, of your production which is cool. Intro and endings okay so uh, our PA series of keyboards so once you go to the PA you know 300 they're going to have multiple intros and endings this is going to give you one intro and an ending which is planning to get the job done the same goes here on the i3 so you can look same button so once you learn it on this keyboard the same things, fill, count in, introduction, introduction and ending, play, all the same. So check it out. When you're getting ready to start a piece, we can pull up another style here. Let's try this. Let's see, we're in bank A. Let me just pull up another style that I had ready to go. Okay, this is like a ballad. So we'll play a ballad, take it down a notch. We've been keeping it up, high energy. Um, let's see. Yes, great. Um, somebody said, I see a lot of similarities uh, you know, in the two boards. Can you sum up the main differences? So yeah, this whole stream is going to be summing it up. But again, if I had to just say in a nutshell, speakers, uh, no speakers, a little bit more hands-on control here. You have EQ knobs, uh, sound engine is the same. So you're going to get the same, uh, you know, uh, 
customizability, variations in styles. You get a little bit more style uh, built into the i3, uh, 790. Uh, excuse me, 790 sounds uh, in the i3, about 700 in the EK50. So again, very, very, very similar, very lightweight and portable, um, still very lightweight, just a little bit bigger because of the speakers inside. So they're very similar keyboards. Uh, if you're looking to do a little bit more work in a sequencer, uh, the extra hands-on controls, which we'll see in a little bit, are very nice uh, to use on the i3. Uh, but they both feature one-touch recording. You can click one button and start recording. So they're very similar units, which is why we want to do the stream. So thank you for your question. Uh, very awesome. All right. Continuing. Oh, yeah, we were going to play the ballad. Take it down a notch. So when you want to use the intro, first thing you want to do is make sure you're selecting the variation that you want to go to after the intro. Because, for example, if I'm on three and then I click intro, you can see that means now it's going to go to variation three after I start. So I want to select variation one because we're going to go to the beginning of the song. And let's make sure everything else looks good. We have our lower voice. Let's see if we go with this. And we're going to select intro. And one other button that you want to know how to use on both of these keyboards, the i3 has it here, is synchronize start. When I hit synchro start, it starts flashing. That's going to let me know that the minute I play the chord, it's going to start the introduction. So here we go. Let's see what we get here. So now we, you can see that it finished the introduction there. And now it's letting me know that hey, I'm on measure four of variation one. So it's a four uh, measure variation. Here we go. So now we can build to the groove. do a fill and then go to three. So again, introductions and endings are very, uh, very, very useful. By the way, I don't know if you heard that, I accidentally didn't trigger the major chord. So the frame of mind when you're playing these uh, and you have like a split, uh, and it, again, takes getting used to, but your left hand, when you have this, the lower part engaged, is going to be triggering the chord. So, you know. So, you know, you got to get used to just making sure that you're hitting it on time, because if you're late, like as if you were regular comping on a piano, uh, the arranger is not going to follow you uh, where you want to go. So, just keep that in mind. All right. I do have something I want to show you that uh, somebody asked a question earlier on and asked about those styles, right? Uh, can you load in styles? Yes, and it's very easy to do it. So just to prepare, uh, just to show you how easy uh, to access the menu is, I plugged in a USB flash drive to the back of the uh, EK50. Now, this connectivity with USB connectivity is going to be actually the same on the i3 uh, and the EK50. There is a USB uh, type A port, which will connect to a device like a flash drive. And there's also a USB type B port, which will go to the computer uh, so it can transmit MIDI information, uh, you know, if you're using it as a controller with your computer. So two USB connection options. But I did go ahead and plug in my USB, and you probably can't see that, but there is a little USB light that shows up on the screen. And there's a media button. Let's see, now you should be able to see it. All right, so when I click the media bu button, you're going to see this only will be available when you have the drive plugged in, letting me know that, hey, I'm going to access some media on the drive. And I can use my category buttons to go through. You can see set list backup, so I can back up my presets. And we're going to talk about what a set list is on the i3. But if I keep going through, user style load. So that is actually the ticket right there. If you download the bonus styles from the uh, Korg EK50 website, you can actually go ahead and put those onto your flash drive and come right over here uh, and you can go to the user style load, which will allow you to then uh, import them into your keyboard. So that's pretty awesome functionality. Uh, and I just wanted you to show you that it is possible um, on the EK50 or the i3. So pretty cool. Final look at the control panel. I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Again, those transpose buttons, very simple. Uh, if you see something circled, like octave here, I, it means to press the shift button to access it. So if I press shift, it 
and transpose. So very hands-on and gives you really, really everything you're going to need uh, when you're you know, playing and, and need quick access to that. Uh, I guess there is one final button that's very important to know, um, but you'll, you'll be familiar with this if you're an arranger person, but STS, uh, single touch settings, uh, that will always give you a sound that goes well uh, with whatever style you're playing. So if I were to pull up, let's say, let's pull up a random style, Disco Party. Okay, <laughs> Disco Party. Um, if I want to make sure that I get the right sound in my, in my right hand, I can press Shift and STS. And you can see it's already on STS letting me know that, hey, this is the recommended uh, sound that goes really well. That's going to be a difference also that we're going to see here uh, on the i3 with some more uh, presets that are available for each style. So you have four different style performance sets, which is nice on the i3. So this might be a good time to kind of just start transitioning up a little bit uh, and seeing some of the differences. So let's see what sound we have pulled up. All right, so first comes first. The navigation of the instrument is, is largely uh, the same. Uh, you can see that, for example, some of the buttons don't uh, match up per se, but it's really going to give you the same options, just how do you get there. So, for example, right now, uh, if I click upper one, it's letting me know, hey, upper one, that's the sound, left and right piano. Upper two, if I click it, super sweep, that's that, that's that sound you hear in the background. Now a little bit different on the i3, but if you want to shut off a layer, so if I just want to hear the piano, I'm going to press shift and turn off the layer I don't want to hear. All right, cool. So now you can see I'm just hearing upper one. It's a cool sound actually. Um, if I want to bring it back in, again, shift, I could turn on upper two. Now, very similarly, uh, there is the lower button here. However, it's kind of doubled with the split. So, whereas you have the physical split button that's right here on the uh, EK50, if I want to turn on that lower split, again, shift, lower. Now you can hear. So that's actually a pretty cool sound. Now, same similarity again. If you want to go ahead and change, I don't, I'm not really crazy about this, to be honest with you. I mean, for this sound, it's a great, great sound. But let's try something else. Let's get maybe a more subtle pad. I can click my lower voice, and it's going to let me know, hey, this is, it's called virtual trav. I don't know what trav stands for, actually. If anyone knows what that means, virtual trav. James pretty much knows everything. James from Korg is also on this, this stream, and he tends to answer all the questions I don't know answers to, so if you know what that means, James. All right, let's go through it. Let's see what else we can do. So you can see I'm on sound 476, and there's so many uh, to choose from, but let's go back to the pads. Let's see. That's a cool one. I happen to like that. Um, and you can see now you're starting to build it. Same thing with when it comes to adjusting the balance. If I want a little bit more of the, the pad, I can press the layer and I can just turn my dial. And that's adjusting the lower level on the instrument. So it's very easy to get in and just start. That's pretty awesome there. All right. Now, I did mention there's a couple of extra buttons. And one thing that's cool about the i3, um, when you compare it to the EK50, is it gives you a little bit more feedback from the buttons. So when you're playing through a style, and you're going to be able to see, I, I deliberately gave you this camera angle here, so that you can see the, the lights and, and how they blink when, when you start to navigate through a style. But you're able to quickly see which uh, parts are active uh, when you are playing. So you can quickly turn things off. Uh, so watch, let's just see what happens with a play on this. Let's all right, so you can see I have something going on there, percussion, drums, and bass. So they're flashing, you see, to the rhythm, which is cool. 
Now, if you're wondering, well, why, why is he so excited about flashing buttons? Well, I think that's a pretty big deal, especially when you're, you know, on the fly and you need to see what you're hearing, <laughs> because if you want to evolve and you want to add in instruments uh, or remove instruments, um, you know, great thing to be able to see it. So let's see what happens here. We'll, we'll start uh, adding and, and removing. Here we go. So let's see, we'll remove, we'll hold shift. You can hear just bass. We'll add it in. There's a kick. That's a pretty cool sound actually. By the way, somebody answered the question already, but uh, someone said, what's the difference between EK50 and EK50L? Uh, and uh, Marek, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, or who answered it? Uh, oh yeah, Marek, yes. Thank you for answering the question in the comments. But EK50, this is the regular EK50. There is also an EK50L Limitless, uh, which is gonna give you uh, a rubberized plastic finish, some new styles, uh, and double the power of the speakers, so much louder uh, built-in internal speakers. So those are the main differences right there. Um, so thank you for your question. Uh, great question there. All right. So we were experimenting. Right. I did mention though, so we kind of tweaked here our own sound, right? We layered, we found a new pad and we made something cool. So set list. Both of the keyboards have set lists, very important and, and it really uh, gives you the functionality on the gig if you need to call up your favorites. But if you want to save something to a slot, you can see I have a bank button and the bank will be indicated on the display. So I'm in bank A, you can see top left of the screen, B. So let's say we want to save this to the first slot in bank C. If I want to save the exact way the panel is, I just press bank and press the slot I want to save. So I'll put one and it flashed. So now, Bank C1, even if I change the sound, if I go back to bank C1. Now this is really cool because it also will remember how you have your variations configured. So uh, if you needed to have it ready to go for let's say on the fly quick changes, uh, what you can do is things like this. I can set my variation one ready to go. I can turn on the introduction so it goes to the intro first and I can save it has a synchronized start. It means when I press the key, it's gonna automatically start. If I save that into position one, look, if I go back, it's now remembering exactly how I want the keyboard to be. So it's gonna be ready to start when I am. So here we go. This is the introduction. So pretty cool and versatile that when you save uh, to set list, again, it's going to remember exactly how you want these uh, configured. So you don't have to go pressing synchronize start. Pretty awesome. And that's going to, again, going to be the same, same functionality on EK uh, as I3. All right. So back over here, let's continue to dive in. Um, chord mode. All right. Unique point of the I3, uh, a special feature is chord mode. Now this is especially valuable if you are somebody who is new. Uh, to maybe even music and you just want to start diving in and, and see what you can come up with with one of these keyboards Well chord mode gives you eight different pre-programmed chords that go with no matter any style you have in the keyboard So let me give you an example Let's let's go to another style. So we hear some variation uh, We'll go here style Here we go. And you can see there's two arrows that allow you to kind of get around the screen and let's go find some random one if anyone has a request, by the way, uh, if you want to hear a certain genre of style, uh, you know, let me know and I can uh, try and find one here to play. But all right, let's see. Rock. Let's find Motown. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Polka. 
I don't know, we got a lot of stuff here. See now, there's so many styles to choose from that I kind of don't know which one I want to choose. Uh, all right. So fun fact about the i3, by the way, if you go closer to the uh, later 200s, um, it's going to start some of the cool uh, new uh, modern styles. Uh, so we can see what we have here. But let's see, soulful. Oh, this is, this is actually not a modern one. This is take it to church like somebody requested. <laughs> All right, this is a cool one because this will give us some uh, modern uh, variation. If I want to access the chords, all I have to do is press the chord mode here. All right, now you'll see when you press chord mode, uh, it lights up red. So these eight buttons now become uh, the chord triggers. Now give a listen. pressing the buttons. Now what's cool about this also is that you can really be hands-on on the panel, um, get your inspiration, maybe you're trying to uh, play the chicken dances. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I won't be playing the chicken dance, um, but you can actually continue to, to manipulate the variations. You can move through uh, the style and just be triggering the chords. So again, if you're somebody who's kind of new to this, you don't really know what chords might go well with things, um, that's going to be a great place to get started. And every style is going to have pre-programmed uh, chords. So give a listen here. We'll pull up something else. Play, let's play the I3. You can still play over the top. So that's pretty cool. You can see, again, inspiration is the, is the key with this instrument, and I think that's really um, the sweet spot. Uh, you know, if you really just want something quick, like, I mean, I was using this when I actually first got it, uh, when I started at Quark. Um, I got it shipped to me and I was on the couch with batteries because it is battery operated and so is the EK50. Both of them can run on batteries, AA batteries. So you can be anywhere with your headphones plugged in. It does have a regular small uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack uh, to plug in. So if you have a regular pair of headphones, plug it in and you're good to go and you start making music. So that kind of versatility is fun if you want to sketch out a song uh, or see what's, you know, it's going to come up from your hands when you're going to play. All right, continuing. I did mention something else that the single touch settings, STS, on the i3, you're going to have four different style performance sets. So if I pull up another style here, let's see, Light Rock. I'm going to go to Bank A, actually. Navigating through my banks using the Bank button. All right, Soulful. Here we go. So uh, I can go through here, and you can see it says Set 1. That means I'm on style performance set 1. It's going to give me... Let's see, let's try this. So that's pretty cool, that's an organ sound, pretty to expect from that kind of a, uh, of a groove. But if I click two, Give me electric piano, right? And you can see here, I can still choose the volume of my layer, uh, of my upper layer, um, and I can combine it with other things, because every time I go through one of the different sets, it's going to change the sound. Horns. So that's pretty cool, uh, and I can go to see what three is. So again, just giving you some different ideas, and as you kind of go through different uh, options here, let's pull up another style. Let's see. Style. Play DI3. Let's pull up a Latin one, actually. I'm a big fan of Latin music, by the way. I see some people from Mexico uh, in the chat, which is, oh, reggaeton. Okay. 
Let's see if we can find. I think the reggaeton is in this area here. Let's find it together and then we'll try and demo that. Let's see. Let me know if I miss it. So if you're just joining us again, uh, my name is Luciano and the product specialist here at Korg and we're having some fun today with the i3 and the EK50. And these are both uh, at the heart arranger keyboards. Um, and let's see what we can find. It's always the case. Oh, here we go. It should be here. Bachata, reggaeton. All right, here it is. I found it. Um, all right, let's try it. Let's see what we get out of this. Now, I'm sure those of you from uh, Latin American countries are going to play this better than I am. I'm going to try, uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, let's just, just to kind of test these out, I'm in set number one. So let's see what we have in the top. We'll turn off synchronize, start. All right, let's see what we get. We'll try the intro. Uh, Let's put it in G minor. We've been drifting around G minor. It's been like F, A, A flat. Here we are at G. All right, let's see what happens. So now you can hear the different sets. Let's see set four. Now another cool thing is again the intro. So with a style like this, you know, I might not have some inspiration being that I'm not as familiar playing the style. Um, you know, you might be able to just, let's see what, let's see, always having fun with a Korg in your hands. Yep, we gotta have some fun here. Um, all right, let's see what happens. Uh, let's try the introduction and see what we get for this. Oh, by the way, I, I, have, I should show you how to fix this. So, you see in that case, I played a left hand chord and look, it sounded really muddy. The reason, once you start to get familiar, the lower split is not turned on. So that means I'm just have upper one mapped over the entire keyboard. So to turn on my lower split, I click shift, turn on lower. So now I have the split in action there so I can continue. So let's see what happens. Intro. So again, pretty cool there, and just gives you some idea how to get started. Um, des, despacito, yes, it does sound like despacito. All right, and you can see there are other, a lot of Latin rhythms in here, um, which is pretty cool, but let's see. Modern bachata. Club Latino, it's cool style. So that's, that's a pretty good variety there. Um, this is a cool one too. If you want to hear the guitars in these keyboards too, just like. Let's see this one. Here we go, we'll start a variation one. So it's a lot of fun, that's a flamenco, and you can hear the guitar. Really, really fun. All right, I do, I could keep going with the, uh, with the flamenco, not Latin jazz. You're right. Oh, well, I guess you're right, actually. Maybe, you know what, I could have given a better example of that. Um, once again, you know what, the thing about these keyboards, and you know, if you're into a specific genre of music, like I'm a jazz player, so the roots, they're gonna come through a lot. 
you know, so all of you, I always say this uh, in all my streams, but if you have one of these keyboards or another arranger or workstation, post videos playing it, it's always great to see the community playing how, they're, how you're supposed to play certain styles. Um, and fun fact, by the way, um, I think Anadil, yeah, Anadil. Um, if you want to actually understand how these styles are made, they're actually voiced by people in different countries who are specialized in that music. So we get the best uh, possible uh, result because you wouldn't want me voicing a, a Latin jazz style uh, or a Latin style to begin with. I might be better at a jazz style. So somebody uh, from South America will be programming the keyboard to make it authentic, which is awesome because both of these instruments are going to give you that really authentic flavor uh, because they're made and designed with people collaborating from all around the world. So that's a pretty fun fact. Uh, cool. All right. A couple of other features, and then I want to show you how to uh, record because I think that's very important. But recording in the instrument, like I said, one touch recording is available. Uh, so let's do this. Let's go back at the beginning. I did play that uh, Latin jazz example. Um, and let's just say we wanted to record that. The i3 and the EK50 have one touch recording, and it's this button right here. And when you press it, you just got to start playing. Uh, to get going. So what I'm going to do is this. The first pass, I'm going to just record uh, what I want to have as the accompaniment. And then I'm going to come back in afterward and I'll add in a piano track and I'll show you how you can uh, access the various tracks uh, inside of the, uh, the sequencer. All right. Let's get started here and I'm going to press the record button. You're going to see it arms it and that's it. When I press start, it's going to go. So we're going to start an F. Here we go. All right, now as soon as it finishes, you can see the record button went off, which means it's now saved. I just did a quick little demo uh, so we can see what happens. Now, to access anything that you just recorded uh, in the i3, you're going to click the sequencer button. Now, it'll automatically subsequently label your songs depending on how many you've done in the past. So this is nine, but you can see I can use my uh, little, uh, what's the, I can't, I'm missing the word. To navigate through, I can scroll through, <laughs> and let's go to nine here, and let's hit play. I can hit play to hear it back. This is playing back in the sequencer. All right, now, when you're in sequencer mode, that's why I was mentioning at the beginning that the hands-on controls here on the i3, if you really want to do a lot of work in a sequencer, I would recommend uh, the i3 because it gives you a little bit quick access to the different parts in the 16 track sequencer. So when I'm playing, you can see again that they will light up based on which ones are actually you're hearing. So you can see here comes parts one, two, three here. And as I click the different parts on the screen, if I click, let's say five, these now become the way to access the various tracks. So I'm in track five now. So I didn't have anything in track five because, you know, you can see it has noise sweep. That's the sound, which we don't need that because that would not go well with, with Latin jazz. So I'm going to use my category buttons. Let's go to the beginning. Let's pull up a piano sound. Cool. All right. Now that we have the piano uh, called up, what we'll do is we can press shift and five. Now it's letting me know that, hey, I'm armed to record on track five. So all I have to do now is I got to choose, do I want to overwrite it or overdub? Now, that's another great feature because if you, obviously I have nothing in that track now, but if you made a mistake, uh, you want to punch in or you want to add to an existing track, you can uh, overdub it and it'll keep the existing MIDI data that's in the sequencer on that specific track. Uh, or if you want to just start fresh, we'll overwrite. And all I have to do to get started is press uh, the record or the, the play button and that'll start the sequencer. I'm trying to figure out which pedal is for my i3. All right, here we go. All right, so I got my piano there and I was very low in the mix, right? Same thing goes once you learn the, the same concepts. I can take it out of recording mode by pressing shift and five again. Now if I play it back, 
Piano's too low though, right? So go to track five and hold it and turn the dial and I can adjust the level of track five. So you see how easy it is to just dive in and start recording uh, and use the sequencer. And I think that if you're, again, if you're spending a lot of time in a sequencer, you have the sequencer in here as well. Uh, I like this, uh, you know, having the extra buttons to be able to access all of the 16 tracks, which is really nice. So let's see, let's raise the level. All right, great. So now we go to track six. Let's see what we have here. Another piano, but let's pull up category. Let's see if we can get a... Yuri guitar. But again, you see the concept. As I go through, I can scroll through my sounds. Now I'm editing track six, and I can choose whatever else I want to go ahead uh, and, and layer in, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so if you're, just, uh, if you're just joining us now, we're about to wrap up. And just fun tip, you can always watch these back. If there's something specific that you want to see, uh, it'll be available on Facebook and YouTube uh, for you to access uh, at a later time. One final feature, performance record, which is a button that's on the i3. Uh, if you want to record or export directly to an, auto, an audio file, a WAV file, uh, you can actually plug in a flash drive to the back port that's on the back of the i3. Uh, and when that flash drive is plugged in, you can record your performance. So everything you play, uh, the variations will automatically be exported as an audio file uh, to your external drive, which is, again, the versatility is pretty awesome. I believe we are just about out of time. So with that, uh, let's see if we can pull up a song. We'll, we'll leave, we'll play you off. But I hope I've answered some of your questions today. Um, and we'll be back with many more streams as always. I want to thank uh, Eric from Product Support being in the chat answering questions as well as James. Uh, so hopefully you guys have gotten all your questions answered. If not, I'll go through the chat after and, and type some responses, all right? But with that said, thank you so much for joining me today and we will see you back here for our next live stream next week. All right, thank you so much everyone.